This is my version of, chapter, of question 11 in chapter 7. The first thing to do in every problem in chapter 7 is to identify whether the problem is about proportions or whether it's about means. In this problem, it's clear that it's a question about proportion, about means, I'm sorry, because we're, they're using the symbol mu for the parameter. So when we look at the three distribution diagram, in the first distribution, we're thinking of some um, random variable that happens to be a numerical random variable. We're interested in the, in the distribution of that random variable. It is to our advantage if it happens to be normally distributed, but that's not as essential. This random variable will have a mean and a standard deviation. We usually don't know what those are, and in fact, that's what we're looking for in the uh, hypothesis test, is to make some decision about, about what the mean is. In this problem, one opinion is claiming that the mean of the population happens to be 52.5. The null hypothesis always includes an equal sign. The alternative opinion or alternative hypothesis is that the mean is significantly less than 52.5. To make a decision about which opinion is correct, we take a sample. In this case, our sample has a size of 30. In other words, we're taking a sample of 30 individuals from here and and we're going to look at what the mean of that sample is. Now, although we're only taking one sample of size 30 and finding the mean of that sample, we want to think about what would happen if we took every possible sample of size 30 and looked at the mean of each of those and then worry about what the distribution, the distribution of these sample means is going to be. Under the right assumptions, the distribution of these sample means is going to be normally distributed. And so that there will be a mean of the distribution of the sample means. The central limit theorem assures us that that's going to be the same as the mean of this original population. Not only that, the central limit theorem says that the standard deviation of the, this distribution of sample means will be the standard deviation of the original distribution divided by the square root of n. Not only that, under the right circumstances, this distribution will be normally distributed whether this one was or not. Some things that will influence this to be normally distributed is if the original population was normally distributed, you can almost guarantee that this one will be. And secondly, if the sample size is 30 or more, then the distribution of this is going to be normally distributed. Now in the problem that we're looking at, we're going to assume that the null hypothesis is true and see if something unusual happens or not. So this mean is going to be 52.5, and so therefore, the mean of the distribution of sample means will also be 52.5. We're told in the problem that uh, the mean of the sample is 52.4, so it's slightly less than here. The x bar that we get for our sample is 52.4. Not only that, the sample standard deviation, the symbol we use for that is lowercase s, is 1.363. If we knew what this standard deviation was, then we would know what this standard deviation was, and our third distribution would just be a standard normal distribution. But because we seldom know what the standard deviation is of this distribution, we're going to approximate this value by taking the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n. Because we're doing that approximation, then our distribution down here is going to be a t distribution instead of a z distribution. The t distribution looks an awful lot like a standard normal distribution. It has a mean of zero, it just happens that the standard deviation in these 
is greater than one, and that depends on what the sample size was. So we're going to translate the information from this normal distribution to a t distribution. The mean will go to zero, the standard deviation will go to something a little bigger than one, and this uh, sample statistic will get transferred to some value down here. It's going to be transferred to a t value, and we find the t values the same way that we find z values. The t value is going to be, the t value of x bar is going to be x bar minus the mean of the distribution that it's coming from, so that's the same as the mean of the original distribution. Divided by, well, this value we will often call the standard error. So that will be divided by the standard error. That will, that will tell what that t value is. Now, because our alternative hypothesis is saying that mu is less than some amount, we're interested in a lower tailed test. That is, we're interested in what's the probability of getting the t that we got or something less than that t value. If that value, if that probability is less than some alpha, the alpha might be stated, and if it's not, then we'll just assume that alpha is 5%. If that area is less than 5%, then an unusual thing happened, assuming that this was true, so we will reject the null hypothesis. On the other hand, if that area is not less than the alpha value, then we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that's step two in this process. Step one was to decide, are we looking at a study of something about a mean or the something about a proportion? Whether this is a problem about means or a problem about proportions changes what the three distribution diagram looks like. Once we've made that decision, then fill out the three distribution diagram. Once that is done, then we can write a script to calculate the desired values. So let's begin by putting in the given information. We're going to assume the null hypothesis. So therefore, the mean of this distribution is going to be whatever the null hypothesis says that it is. Just for my personal preference, I'm going to call that mu zero to remind me that it's coming from the null hypothesis, and that's 52.5. Other given information was the sample size. Our sample had 30 individuals in it. Usually, we would have to collect data and calculate the mean and the standard deviation. They've done that work for us. So x bar, the mean of the sample, uh, is 52.4 and s, the standard deviation of the sample is 1.63. From that calculated, from that given information, we're going to calculate some data. Some of the hard work had already been done for us. The, they had calculated the mean of the sample and the standard deviation of the sample. We need to find this standard error, but that's going to be easy because it will be the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root, ooh, there is a mistake, the square root of n C is going to be s divided by the square root of n. Now, looking at our three distribution diagram and the calculations that we've done so far, we now know how to find the t-value, the test statistic, because we can take just the x-bar minus the mu divided by se. Test statistic is x-bar minus mu, we're calling it mu zero, divided by se. Now that's all that this uh, particular problem was asking us to find, so we could run that script, and now we would know what t is. I had to adjust things a little bit so that you could see it, but notice that that um, test statistic is going to be a negative 0 0.3360261. If we were to complete this test, we would still want to find 
this area that's below T. So to do that, we're going to need to use a PT command. Um, we'll need to have PT of the T value, our test statistic, along with the degree of freedom, DF, for the degree of freedom. So therefore we can find uh, the p-value is pt of t with that degree of freedom code. And so there's the t that they're asking for in our problem. And there's the, uh, the p-value. The p-value is, is really quite large here. It's almost 40%. So that's way bigger than, uh, than the alpha of, uh, of 5% even. So... So we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis in this case. Okay, that's the idea. Hope it helps. Notice the three steps. First, identify whether it's a mean or proportion. Second, study the, the three distribution diagram for that case, filling in the information as you go, identifying how you would calculate other information. And then step three, write the script that you need to do the calculations.